Hi traders, happy Friday. Well, it's early evening for me here in Wellington, Florida. But listen, today is Friday and I obviously know a lot of people are very happy when Friday comes around because it's the end of their work week. Well, for me, Friday, this week at least, is almost like the beginning of my work week. First of all, I had five study sessions today with five different groups of my traders. It was an incredibly long but very rewarding day for me. Now listen, out of those five study groups, what I want to do for you is actually share my first study session. That's right. It's not the entire study session. I can't do that. But I want to share like the first 20 minutes or the first 30 minutes of that study session. That's right, every single word, every single detail, every single trade. You will see me trade in their faces, you will see me instruct them, you will see me guide them, you will see me answer their questions, you will see me laugh with them, you will see me j jubilate and rejoice with them together. We had a great time. So I'm gonna do that, right, now. I'm going to share. It's relatively long. I'm going to do it in both English and Spanish. But I want you to try to take this in just to get a little inside peek of what we do every single day of the week. In addition to that, I do not want you to forget that this weekend is, an, is a very busy weekend for me. Tomorrow is my free trade for a living event in English. Of course, the name of that same event in Spanish is Vivir de Trading. I want you to attend that. That's at 10 a.m. New York time tomorrow. And if you are owners of my trading poker cards, remember, we have a study session coming up this upcoming Sunday. So as you can see, Friday was an incredibly busy day for me. Tomorrow's going to be a busy day with the free event. And Sunday's going to be a, a decent day with my trading poker study session. Do not forget. In the meantime, enjoy my first study session from today. Boom. Good morning, traders. Good afternoon to some. Hope all is well. Good right, morning. Are we ready to do this and do it well to close out our week? You guys ready? All right. Listen, I used to sit down in front of my computer every morning. I used to briefly close my eyes and tell myself that this morning is going to be one of the very best trading mornings of my life. Now, quite naturally, that usually didn't happen. <laughs> but I would say it every morning to myself. I would put myself into that mindset that I'm going to be strict. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to play what I know. This is going to be one of the most disciplined trading mornings of my career. That at the end of this morning, I'm going to look back and see nothing I did wrong. Not a single mistake, not a single flaw. I used to tell myself, whether I make money or not, that's besides the point. I can only control what I do. And I want to make sure that what I do is correct. And I used to say that to myself every single morning to put myself into that mindset. All right. So that's something I actually suggest as a practice for some of you. You don't want to be one of these traders that just simply blankly and blindly and very vaguely moves into every single day. It's almost as if their every day is the same Monday. Tuesday is really Monday as well. Wednesday is just another Monday. Thursday is Monday and Friday is Monday. You don't want to be one of these traders that just wakes up rolls out of bed, turns the computer on with this vague notion of just hoping that today is better than yesterday. You want to be specific with your approach. You want to make promises to yourself. You want to hold yourself accountable every single morning. 
you want to focus on making today better than yesterday, better than last week, better than any other point in your trading career. This is how you grow. This is how you train your mind to focus. You got it? Do you understand? All right. Let's get ready to do this. We have a little bit a little bit more than five minutes to go before the open. This is a perfect time to take a look across your watch list, your, your family of stocks, to see which stocks are indicated at this particular point to open up above their key moving averages or the fabulous four, which stocks are indicated on your list to open below those key moving averages or the fabulous four. Are there any excessive gaps like Microsoft on my list is looks like it's indicated to experience an excessive gap up here in the 140 area. Yesterday's close was 136.25 more or less. So this is a fairly uh, excessive gap for Microsoft. It's not normal. So that would be one that you might focus on a little bit more off the open than others should Microsoft be one of the stocks in your family. So you basically want to take your list and divide them into seven, seven, several categories. Are there any excessive gaps that's away from the key moving averages of the fabulous board? And that's one category. Then the other categories, which ones are just slated to open up regularly above and which ones are slated to open up regularly below? That's another two categories. And is there anything that seems to be poised to open up right around the 200 period moving average? Because as I've always taught you, one of my favorite plays is a violent surge off the 200, up or down, that the first bar at first bar is a violent move up and it originates, that violence originates from around the 200 or that first bar is a violent surge to the downside and the origin of that surge to the downside is around the 200 period moving average. So these are the categories that I divide my stock into at least mentally. And I start this process about five minutes before the open. This will give you a good head start on what should get a little bit more of your attention off the open so that you're not scattered all over the place. All right, guys, let's get ready to do this. It's time. It's Friday, last day of the week. Let's close out on a very positive powerful note so that we go into this weekend feeling good about our progress and move into next week with even a heightened level of excitement and passion and readiness. 45 seconds, 30 seconds, 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, boom! love it i love this game i love it i love it jd coming out of the block strong still a little bit too early to do anything but coming out of the block strong those of you who play paypal a little interesting explosion off of its late day base from yesterday as well My Apple players, we got some strength coming into Apple as well. The excessive gap in Microsoft, um, not so unex unexpectedly um, 
stalling. JD, after one minute, holding its strength pretty well. QCOM exploding out of uh, its trap zone and pretty close to its 200. Guys, I'm going to take uh, a short here in Microsoft. This is going against the excessive gap to the upside. I'm going to see where this takes me. Um, I will likely stop out above the highs here. All right. We'll see. I want to see how those highs are taken out, though. So it's a possibility that I stop out and regroup above the high of the day and see how maybe the round number is dealt with. But we're going to see how this works. JD strong, remaining strong this morning. All right. There's mine. There, there it is. Come to Poppy. Come to Poppy. Yeah. Boom. Boom. There we go. There we go. Boom. 3K. Boom. I love it. I love this game. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me, baby. Let's see if I can get this. Here we go. I love it. Oh, shoot. Too much, guys. I'm always doing that. You know, always. Anybody take that with me, guys? All right, cool. Loving it. All right, guys, help me out here. We're five minutes into the trading morning. Who's making money? Después de cinco minutos, ¿quién es ganando? ¿Quién es ganando dinero? <laughs> ah, I love it, I love it, I love it. Boom. All right, guys, I couldn't keep my 3K. I made a mistake. Uh, I lost... Uh, I lost like four hundred dollars on the mistake. I had, what is it? Yeah, I had like thirty one, thirty two hundred dollars. But I put too many orders beneath me, like right down here around just before the round number of one thirty nine. I had too many, and so this move down filled me. And no, it was up here. I went long. And I went long instead of just covering all of my short. I had too many orders, so it took me out and made me long in this additional drop. 
Um, I just got out. I should have maybe tried to hold it, but usually, guys, when I make a mistake, I just exit. I don't play around. I've kind of learned to, to be that way throughout my trading career. I usually don't try to finesse or anything. I can, you know, let me just take the three or four hundred dollar loss. So twenty seven hundred dollars on that play, but I did have like thirty one hundred dollars in it. What else are you guys doing? What are you doing? Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. What are you doing? QCOM? Whoa, a lot of people at QCOM. Nice. Okay. Nice powerful bar there. What's this Baba door dropping? Oliver wants more. Oliver wants more. More, please. No. Oliver wants more. go you know you know the deal yes all right nine minutes into the trading day two trades boom boom con mis bebecitos that's right you're my babies google gaga google gaga mis bebes <laughs> When a stock starts with an elephant bar out of the back when I enter with confirmation with two lots. All right, what's the what's the question? I don't see a question. Is it oh is it above? Okay, Olive is the first stop adjustment mandatory to break even. No. Uh, break even stop is not mandatory. I usually don't use one. Um, but in a lot of cases, it can be helpful. I don't, I don't use break even stops usually. That's the same experience they've had with me, you know, and but believe it or not, every trader's experience is different, right? Every trader's experience is different. So some traders might do well with the break even stop. Other traders might have a completely different experience. This is why the number 20 is the magic number for you. Instead of guessing, why not let your own experience be the proof. Do you guys understand what I'm saying, guys? Why not just get out of the world of theory, looking for the answer from someone else, and get it from your own experience? Do it 20 times. All right, so the, the question here is, I mean, I'm not having good experience with 20 with, with break even stops. So basically don't do break even stops 20 times and see if at the end of 20, did that serve you better or did it, was it worse? You understand? And now you have, empirical proof you have experiential knowledge not theory not an answer from someone else do you understand this traders or am i talking to myself all right
Beautiful. There were some more questions up here. Let me see. All right. Oliver, I see how Microsoft just completed its whale and didn't have follow through. I killed it to protect the whale. Was that correct? Let me pull up Microsoft. So if I get my epic pen here. So I think what you're saying is here is where is that what we're, we're talking about right there all right so we drop back you kill it here is that where you kill it All right, top of the red bar. So you you actually have, you actually move your pivot down, you move your stop down to this pivot, and then to protect that drop, you move your stop to above that bar. Do I have that correct? All right. How many lots did you have? Two. All right. Uh, it's not technically wrong. Big bar stop is not. That's something I teach you to do. Um, now, I'm willing to bet that 50% are going to go down further if you don't move that stop. And 50% aren't. So it's a tough call. Why don't you split the baby? Be King Solomon, you know, split the baby in half. Why don't you try protecting one lot of it and keeping the stop at the pivot on the final lot? And let's see how 20 times doing that, what that reveals for you. The truth the truth is often in the middle of two choices, right? This is the whole concept of uh, business negotiations. It's supposed to be the concept of how most political systems operate. You have two ruling parties. They fight with each other over certain causes and things, but it's usually the truth is in the middle of both of the extreme arguments, right? It's not more, it's not 100% one side or 100% the other side. It's usually in the middle of two arguments. And when you have two political parties that just won't move toward the middle and you have just a collapse in the whole democratic process, that's a little, not a little bit. That's what we're going through in this country right now, in my country. All right. But this is also a general concept for life. That if you have two extreme choices, yes or no, the truth is in the middle. Well, yes for one, no for the other. So when in doubt, always go toward the middle. Split the baby. We learned that from King Solomon. You guys remember the story of King Solomon? And where splitting the baby comes from? You guys, you guys remember that story? No? Yes? All right, very quickly, let me tell you. I'll try to be brief. King Solomon, as you may know, was deemed the most intelligent, wise ruler 
in the world. And people would come from all over miles on, a, on the specific day that King Solomon gave counsel. They came to King Solomon on the specific day that he gave free counsel to whoever would present their problem. And on this particular day, there were two women that presented their case to King Solomon. They both had recently bore children, very recently, days in fact. And the woman, one woman had a baby in her arms in front of King Solomon and the other woman did not. King Solomon asked, what seems to be the problem? And he says, you, you speak first. So the woman without a baby said, your honor, King, your, your, your highness, we were in the same ward. We bore our babies on the same day. But this woman has my baby in her arms now because her baby died in the middle of the night. And in the middle of the night, as I slept with my baby, she replaced my baby, the live baby, with her dead baby. I woke up and the dead baby was, in, was beside me and she has my live baby and claims that it's hers. And he then asked the other woman and the other woman says, no, she is a liar. It's her baby who died in the middle of the night and she can't accept that and now wants my baby. This is my baby, your highness. So King Solomon says, okay, here's how we're gonna solve this. He calls his swordsmen over and he instructs the mother to put the baby on top of a table. They bring a table out, they put the baby on top of the table. And he says, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have my swordsmen divide the baby in half. I'm going to split the baby in half. I'm going to give one half to you, ma'am. I'm going to give the other half to you, and then we can, we can live in peace. All right. The swordsman raises the sword up in the air, and he says, on the count of three, I want you to strike. One, two, and the woman without the baby yelled out in terror, please, please, your highness, the baby is hers. I'm the liar. And King Solomon turns to a swordsman and say, give the baby to this woman. She's not the liar. The baby's hers. And now the moral of that story, of course, we know that the real mother would never want harm to come to her own child. So she, the first one that screamed out, no, was really the real mother. So the moral of this story is that the truth is in the middle. Splitting the baby in the middle reveal the truth. When you have two decisions that are on the opposite side of each other. Do I do this or do I do that? The truth is often in the middle. You split the baby. And I use this piece of wisdom in all corners of my life. It's a cool story, no? Awesome.